Hello everyone. Um, today we discussed postpartum hemorrhage, which we know is part of the triad of big uh, killers of women of reproductive age around the world. That is uh, including um, hypertensive disorders uh, in pregnancy and also uh, infection. We know that postpartum hemorrhage um, kills uh, one woman every four minutes around the world. So it's, it's a huge, huge uh, problem. Um, the prevalence of postpartum hemorrhage is around uh, 6%. So it's 6% of all uh, deliveries. But the understanding is that a lot of these um, are underestimates because most um, uh, patients with postpartum hemorrhage are not reported. Um, an audit done uh, at our hospital um, showed that 3% of all deliveries actually were postpartum hemorrhage. And again, that looks like another underestimate. Um, in terms of uh, mortality, um, there are about 800 um, maternal deaths in Zambia every year, on average, those that are reported. And 30 to 40% of those uh, deaths result from postpartum hemorrhage. So that's a huge, huge um, uh, problem, even, uh, even locally. Uh, so what is postpartum hemorrhage? So postpartum hemorrhage is bleeding after childbirth. That has the potential of causing hemodynamic compromise, uh, morbidity, and mortality uh, for, for a woman. So this is really my definition because um, um, having worked in labor ward uh, for a long time, um, the core you get is really that a woman is pouring and you go there and she's really pouring. And if you don't do anything about it, you end up uh, with that woman uh, needing surgery, that woman uh, needing um, ICU care, that woman needing blood. So the postpartum hemorrhage call that you get um, has nothing to do with uh, 1,000 mules and it has nothing to do with uh, 500 mules. It has something to do with the fact that it's torrential and it might cause um, hemodynamic compromise. It might cause morbidity and mortality if nothing is done about it. So it's interesting that the official definition of postpartum hemorrhage has numbers in it when there's been several papers, countless papers that show that we really don't know how much a woman has bled after a, a childbirth. We can't quantify uh, blood loss. Um, even experienced people can't quantify blood loss. Actually, so many studies have shown that the more blood loss you have, the less accurate our quantification. So it's... Um, it's interesting that our definition of postpartum memory has numbers that we cannot extract uh, from clinical practice. And uh, then, so what we want to say is that if the bleeding that a woman is experiencing is more than usual, um, after childbirth. We just call that postpartum memory. And it means that we get in with the intervention regardless of the amount. You call people you have to call. If you have to call your consultant, if you have to call a senior, you call based on how much bleeding is happening there and then not because of the total quantity. So, yeah, we get back to the official definition. So it's 500 mules of blood loss after a vaginal delivery and 1,000 mules of blood loss after a cesarean section so that is also a problem it's a problem because it really does not matter how you lose blood so if you lose 1000 mules um after a cesarean section and you lose 1000 mules after a vaginal delivery there's really um no difference there because the the amount of bleeding is what will cause the, the level of compromise that you get. So you wonder why we have a different volume for vaginal delivery and a different volume for, for, uh, for cesarean section when we know that 
once a woman loses 1000 mules whether it's vaginal or by cesarean that's when the vital signs start to shake a little and so on so i also think that um we should um have one volume for postpartum hemorrhage um because whether you lose blood from a fracture and you're pregnant, you lose blood from a scalp injury when you're pregnant, the amount of compromise you are going to get is is uh, related to the volume, not the way you got the bleeding. So that's about that. Then there's the second definition, which is about any blood loss that causes compromise. So that is a better definition. But the only problem there is that... Um, you don't want to see compromise uh, before you cause something postpartum hemorrhage. That is the only um, issue with that. Then we have primary postpartum hemorrhage, which is bleeding within 24 hours. And we have uh, secondary postpartum hemorrhage, which is bleeding after 24 hours, but within six weeks of delivery. So the importance of this primary and secondary postpartum hemorrhage classification is that... Um, it kind of gives you the idea of um, the etiology of the postpartum hemorrhage. So if um, the bleeding happens after 24 hours, you know it's um, sub-involution, it's uh, probably infection, uh, endometritis, it is uh, likely uh, retained products of conception, uh, retained membranes and so on. So that would um, give you an idea of what the cause is. Uh, then we have uh, another way to classify postpartum hemorrhage, which is major postpartum hemorrhage and minor postpartum hemorrhage. We say minor postpartum hemorrhage when the bleeding is less than 1,000 mils. And we say mm, major postpartum hemorrhage when the bleeding is above 1,000 mils. So even the major postpartum hemorrhage is kind of divided into severe uh, major postpartum hemorrhage which is when a woman loses more than two liters and moderate major postpartum hemorrhage when a woman loses um, somewhere between 1000 and uh, 2000 so that's how that is divided another interesting bit about that is that when we say major postpartum hemorrhage we don't um we don't say um, major postpartum hemorrhage is this is the volume for vaginal delivery and major postpartum hemorrhage this is the volume for uh, for cesarean section and so on we just say major postpartum hemorrhage and i think that's the correct the correct way blood loss is blood loss uh, regardless of how you get blood loss you get hemodynamic compromise based on volume and not due to how you lost that blood then um Lastly, we have this terminology, which is um, ongoing major postpartum hemorrhage and controlled um, major postpartum hemorrhage. So you can describe your postpartum hemorrhage as ongoing or controlled just to uh, as a communication to to inform your senior, your consultant, your colleague um, who you want to get help uh, for that patient to have some accurate way of communicating this information. So that's the last bit of um, uh, postpartum hemorrhage uh, uh, terminology. I uh, hope you learned something. Um, thank you for listening, and we will see you in the next um, presentation.